Lately, I have noticed a lot of bizarre conspiracies. And they've always been around. I remember some bizarre stuff when I was a kid that people would claim. And governments that were at war with each other were supposedly conspiring together. And just conspiracies, if you put any logic or reasoning to it, it falls apart. I would like to address why. Why are people buying into this? And what does the Bible say? Now, to start with, understand that these are thinking, reasoning people, but, for the most part, they reject the concept of God, Satan, Heaven, and Hell. And if you reject those things, and you're trying to approach the world from a logical, reasoning standpoint, it doesn't make sense. Why are politicians doing things that, adopting systems that are proven to fail, don't work, are not feasible, but they keep doing them. They keep doing these things. Why? What's going on? It actually is quite simple. Because if these people reject the concept of heaven and hell, they also reject that demonic forces behind the scenes can be manipulating the politicians, working toward the end times, and getting these things to work. But why are they rejecting them? Why are they rejecting this whole concept? And that is rebellion. Rebellion against God. If they reject the concept of God, then they are free to do whatever they want. But if there is a God, if they acknowledge there is a God, they're acknowledging that they there is a creator. If they acknowledge that they are there is a creator, they are acknowledging that they were created. If they acknowledge that they were created, they're acknowledging that there is a reason, a purpose for their life. They were created for a reason. If they acknowledge that there is a reason for their creation, then they're acknowledging that they're not doing that purpose. They're not fulfilling a role, a purpose for their creation. If they acknowledge that there is a job, a task, a reason for them to be here, then they are acknowledging that they are in sin or rebellion against said creator. If they acknowledge that they are in rebellion, they are acknowledge that they are in sin. If they acknowledge that they are in sin, they are acknowledging that they need to repent. And therefore they are acknowledging that they are in need of salvation and forgiveness. And that is the point that they want to war against. And they know where the logic leads. And so they will fight it on the first step. Because if there is no God, they are free to do whatever they want. And it's what they want to do. That is the root cause. And since they reject the concept of God, but they want to do what they want, and they see the things in the world are not working out, things aren't making sense in the model that they have created, then they have to come up with a reason. Well, why isn't it? It must be alien conspiracy, shape-shifting lizards, or whatever else they wish to believe. Things that fall apart if you put any logic or scientific reasoning to it, but they accept it and demand that it must be true because the alternative is unthinkable. It's unthinkable that there's a God and they need forgiveness. There are people who will stand up and shake their fist against God simply because God demanded that they need to repent. Salvation is a free gift, but they don't want to accept it. They want what they want. But tying into these conspiracies, what does the Bible say? Isaiah 12, 13. Don't say that everything these people call a conspiracy is a conspiracy. Don't fear what they fear. Don't let it terrify you. Remember that the Lord of armies is holy. He is the one who you should fear and the one you should be terrified of. Now, fear there is referring to respect and reverence. Terrified of is referring to the fact that if you're going to rebel against him, it's not going to go well for you. And in the end, uh, Isaiah 45, 21 through 24, is a very fascinating little passage. It says, this is God speaking, Speak and present your case. Yes, let them consult one another. Who revealed this in the distant past? and predicted it long ago. Wasn't it I, the Lord? There is no other God except me. There is no other righteous God and Savior besides me. 
return to me and be saved, all who live at the ends of the earth, because I am God, and there is no other. I have bound myself with an oath. A word has gone out from my righteous mouth that will not be recalled. Every knee will bow to me, and every tongue will swear allegiance. It will be said of me, Certainly righteousness and strength are found in the Lord alone. All who are angry with him will come to him and be ashamed. In the end, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess, Jesus Christ is Lord. And when it comes to conspiracies, remember God is in control. God is God. He will allow a conspiracy to go through if it meets his plan. And he will expose it if he decides that it is not something that needs to be done. God is God. The level of control he has, both in the universe and in our daily lives, is amazing. And God wants a personal relationship with us. He created man for the purpose of a relationship. He didn't want wind-up toys just to sit there and say, praise God, praise God, praise God. He wanted a relationship with us. He wanted us to talk to him, to tell him how our day went, to tell him we're hurting and need help, to tell him how glad we are that he is in our lives. That is the relationship God wants with us. And that is what you should not forget. Don't allow people to distract you with all these other things. But that is what the Bible says about conspiracies.